So welcome back to our summer school. Our next session is from Sadi, who talks about the Python data tools for CF NetCDF. So Sadi, please. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Um, so Luciana has, has taught you through, um, well, a number of things, but she has um, covered a lot about NetCDF. And she, I think, in terms of in terms of NetCDF, she almost ended on a note of best practice with NetCDF. Um, I'm going to take that forward and talk about the CF convention um, for metadata best practice with NetCDF. And I'm going to move on from that to talk about um, some tools developed by uh, the team I work for, NCAS CMS. Um, so we are part of the, the National Center for, for Atmospheric Science. Uh, with the, the computational modeling team. Um, but also, there's a, an international uh, net CDF community and a CF community that have been going uh, for decades, I believe. Um, so it's it's a real community effort. Um, but yeah, I would like to just um, name check uh, members of my team who were some of the creators of these, these tools. Um, so David Hassel, um, Andy Heaps, and Roz, Roz Hatcher. Um, Okay, so I guess I've I've said most of this actually already, um, but essentially, um, in terms of my talk, I'm going to be covering net CDF as, as a recap because obviously uh, Luciana's um, given lots of detail on that, but particularly as a recap towards thinking about the CF metadata conventions and how they relate to net CDF. Um, so. I'll be covering how NetCDF provides flexible self-describing storage, um, but that flexibility means it needs to be interpreted, and hence there's a there's a good need for standardized metadata with NetCDF to to facilitate data sharing and uh, community use. Um, so uh, again, Luciana has gone through the the NetCDF data models, um, but CF NetCDF, um, which is um, the shorthand I'll use for NetCDF and the CF metadata conventions together, uh, that has its own data model. Um, in fact, you can make numerous data models, but um, there's, a, there's a formal one that I'll be talking about. And finally, um, and this is what we'll mainly be going through in, in the practicals, um, the, the NCAS suite of tools uh, working with um, CF NetCDF. Um, so I'll, I'll introduce those uh, a bit later on. but. Um, key point to, to mention first is that they are built around the CF data model. So I'm not just um, discussing these as a kind of um, unrelated add-on. These are things that are um, tied quite fundamentally with, with CF and uh, CDF. Um, so this is, uh, the plan is that this will be, um, I think I've got, yeah, it says one hour there. I think when I was practicing this, I, it was more like half and half each for this, for these slides, which are going to provide the the underlying concepts. Um, and then we go on to meet me kind of demonstrating and walking through the libraries and, and usage of those. Um, so we'll see how we go for time. And we'll see whether I can, I can, uh, yeah, get, get the VM working. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I can do that. Um, so yeah, just to recap again of what Shiana was saying. So NetCDF, the, the network common data form. Um, I mean, I say it's, it's a file format here. That's that's kind of how you encounter it. But really, it's a, an API um, or many APIs. And it's um, a set of related software libraries, a whole ecosystem full of them for, for using this Net's, these data models. Um, so it could be used in to imply a number of different things. But um, yeah, ultimately, we're talking about working with this file format based on these data models. Um, and again, I think Luciana has covered, covered most of this. Um, but I will have a quick recap of the data models. But I guess the important thing about NetCDF for, for my talk, um, oh, I'm just thinking, you can you see my pointer? Or do I need to click the other pointer for it to be? Never mind, never mind. Um, I'll try and use the pointer here. Yeah, so if you can see this, yes, just to it's kind of useful actually. Yeah, so NetCDF is, is self describing. Um, you know, metadata is associated with data arrays. Um, but I'd use a kind of an, an analogy of 
if you gave everyone, um, say you gave everyone a certain object, like a, like a fruit, um, if you ask everyone to describe that object, they'll, they'll probably, you know, they'll come up with similar descriptions, but the chance of every single person coming up with a, the same description as something that's definitive and cannot be um, confused with, with something else is, is unlikely. Um, so that flexibility it comes with interpretation um, necessarily. So, um, so say someone described, um, you know, the fruit they had as, uh, you know, it's a, it's a yellow fruit. It could be a banana. It could be a lemon. Um, how do you definitively say this is a banana? And um, I guess you could just, you know, call it by name in a sense. But in terms of ge geoscientific quantities, it's a bit more difficult because these things can be very subtle in their in their definitions and their um in their nature so it is quite it's quite tricky in in the earth sciences um so that flexibility like i say is is the key thing that um can be seen as a, in a way a downside um and this is where the, the cf conventions will will come into play um but otherwise that cdf's great i've listed lots of you know lots of ticks here for things that you can't really argue on on good things here. Um, throughout throughout the talk, I'm going to be um, providing some kind of res recommended resources for further reading um, as well. So I'm not sure if you've seen this, but there's so many different resources on on the uh, University uh, Center for Atmospheric Research homepage there. Um, so yes, just a quick read of the, of the data models that. Um, if you've heard a lot about in, in the previous talk. But the, the key thing here is you have the classic data model um, and you have your, your enhanced data model. So the classic data model is that the three core elements of, of a variable attribute dimension. Um, but when you move to the enhanced data model, you still have those, but instead of um, them sitting within the data themselves, they are necessarily uh, all within I say all within a group. Now you, you can um, have a flat structure, so you can essentially have no groups, but they're always going to be considered to be within this group structure. Um, and secondly, you also have uh, user types, so it's not just your your primitive C types that you can have. You can also um, you know users can also define various things of their own. So that's just a quick summary there. Um, but yes, now to kind of continue on. With, on from what I was saying, let me just quickly go back to here about NetCDF being essentially, you know, having all these benefits, but the flexibility, meaning it, it does require some interpretation. Um, and my analogy of the fruit, I think I, I meant to go on to say, you know, this is the analogy of if you gave um, 10 people the same data set, um, you know, they could all describe it, but it, it'll be in a different way. Um, so the CF metadata conventions. Uh, I think the, the full the full name is um, the Climate for Forecast Metadata Conventions uh, for for the NetCDF API, um, and we're going to use CF, CF conventions for short um, going forward. That's the, the kind of general term that's used. Um, so conventions, as as the name suggests, these are standards that um, help to um, make sure that everyone is discussing the same um, the same aspects, so that people aren't describing the same thing in different ways. For example, um, so they provide a, a definitive description of what um, a data a data might be, and furthermore, of um, various properties of it. So, um, yeah, I've got this. So, you know, in space and time. Its domain and various, yeah, you know, the metadata you can use for for geo scientific data. Um, that in any sense that the CF conventions will try to to standardize that where where sensible. Um, so just some of it here of of the CF conventions themselves. Um, so the, the main one I've been going on about here is it reduces um, the need for interpretation of, of NetCDF. Um, so that in turn will allow um, different users of data to decide whether they've got comparable um, data sets. So whether 
um, you know, if, if some institute had a data set um, with with this standardized metadata, they would be able to say much more easily whether um, a data set they got from, say, another institute uh, was something that they could, um, well, you know, compare um, with, with what they had without having to, you know, send loads of emails back and forward and ask various questions. Um, I think one of, the, one of the key design principles of, of the CF conventions is that obviously they have to be possible by, by machine um, because, you know, it's CDF is this binary format that's, you know, needs to be processed by machine, obviously, but um, also that humans can um, understand um, this metadata without, um, you know, too much need for, um, well, without having to think too much, basically. So designed to be both human and machine readable. Um, now, the CF Convention Center on website I just put there, which is another great um, resource. That's why I put in a nice big, big box. Um, so the elements of CF Net CDF. So this is Net CDF on its own. This is the CF Conventions applied to Net CDF. Um, so remembering the the data models from Net CDF, uh, dimensions, variables, and attributes are the key elements um, in either of the data models. Um, and in CF Net CDF, um, I've tried. Um, uh, portion of the table in, in a way that, that illustrates this. So a dimension um, is largely the same as in NetCDF, but you can see with variables, um, they are categorized according to what they represent um, in terms of metadata. Attributes also, um, so you can see there's about eight different variable types here, and then three different attributes. Um, so I'll not cover each one of, of these uh, individually because I'm going to be showing some diagrams next. Um, but you see, you know, a data variable that's fairly uh, self-explanatory. But then you have further um, elements that describe things that are more to do with with the domain and the, ultimately the underlying metadata of of the data you have. So. Um, uh, you know, cell areas or volumes, um, you know, various different types of coordinates, um, and so on. And then with attributes, um, they're also categorized uh, in a few different ways. Um, it's like I'm not going to dwell too much on on these in the table. These are the different elements, and we're going to see some diagrams. I'm going to show you some some UML um, shortly. Um, okay, yeah, here's <laughs> here's the promise UML. Um, so in terms of the coloring here, um, I've just put some light yellow to indicate what is what is the net CDF elements. Uh, the rest of these elements are, as, as in the table, the CF CDF elements. So um, so the CF conventions aspects. Um, you can see that most of them um, are the variables that themselves are um, connected to, to the net CDF variable in, in um, well, in this case, quite a straightforward way. But there are a few that go via this generic coordinate variable um, um, abstract uh, class. Um, and you see all of these are, are coordinate variables of some type. Hence this abstraction, uh, and then you also have, um, like I said, this is a few categories um, with which you can um, add net CDF attributes into for four classes there, and the dimension um, is just largely as with um, net CDF without CF. So that's the basic correspondence there. Um, so as I think I mentioned at the start, NetCDF has its data models. Um, now CF NetCDF as well has, well, you, you can create various different data models for this, you know, um, 
you know, there's numerous ones you could make. Um, and yeah, I guess before I, I go on um, to, to outline the official data model which has emerged, um, I should yeah just highlight some of the benefits of having a model because it, it's not like a data model has been created just just for the sake of it, you know, just to, to sound fancy. Um, I think a real need emerged for, for a data model because, and I think the key one is is he illustrated in this diagram. Um, so you have the, the net CDF data models. You have the CF conventions uh, for, for net CDF. Um, if you have a data model that allows one interpretation um, for whatever application you have, whatever use you have, ultimately for um, CF net CDF. But without that data model, there could be multiple different interpretations um, for, for these, you know, for these applications. So um, various different people can can interpret things differently. And again, we come back to um, the whole point, really, of the CF conventions, which is, um, well, I say the whole point, that's possibly uh, so, you know, subjective, but um, one of the key points being that you want to reduce this need for interpretation on NetCDF. Um, um, and uh, yeah, other um, advantages um, that it does in itself, creating this data model or thinking about this data model can improve the understanding of CFNet CDF. So a data model in itself, you know, you're, you're thinking about what the core components are of something and the relationships between all the different parts, um, which will improve understanding there. Um, it will help with enhancements to the to the CF convention. So as I think I'd touch upon in a slide uh, later on, um, the CF conventions aren't static, they're actively developed. Um, so um, the community decides on um, changes that are discussed and, and when people are happy with them generally they are um, you know the conventions are updated and um, this up update process having a data model can help to um, help to uh, streamline that in a sense um, it can also help the, the software tools that actually work with um, CF net CDF um, and actually, you know, what I'm going to demonstrate um, in, the, in the second half slides and for, for the uh, the lab tutorial are some tools that we've created that uh, are based upon, upon this model. Um, and finally, if you have a data model for CFNet CDF, um, and I'll, I'll show you the, the official one next, which is actually independent of, of the, the net CDF encoding, so it'll help to make compliant data easier to, to represent in other file formats uh, so not just net cdf and then it's various uh, variants okay so the official data model um, so as i was saying before there's different data models that can be constructed naturally but um, in 2017 i believe uh, oh yeah it says there actually um uh, there was a paper published, uh, lead author was, was David Hassel, and he was, um, and his team had um, put forward a data model that had a number of benefits. Um, so that's the key one I've mentioned here is being necessary and sufficient, which I guess is quite a, a mathsy term. What I mean there is the minimal set of elements that's needed to essentially account for the whole of the CF conventions um in, in an abstract way but it doesn't provide any more elements than that so it's it doesn't have anything that it doesn't need um and it's now the official model so it's been officially accepted into the cf conventions um and a link up up there to the cf conventions 1.9 uh the version that's the I think the latest version is 1.8 and this is the one that is due to come out next um, but now that this is the official data model, it's guaranteed to be consistent and update with 
uh, whatever the next version will be. So um, from 1.6, version 1.6 um, forward, that data model was up to date and was um, able to account for the whole of the CF conventions at, at that point. Uh, okay, so the full picture. So I'll just quickly go back to show you. Um, so this diagram here um, is is in itself a data model, but I'll describe it more on this next slide, um, just because I'm going to show it in relation to, to NetCDF um, elements as well. So this one here is just the one I, I'm, I've highlighted in green on this next slide. Um, so same thing there, but I've added in some further um, some further components here. And the colouring, the colouring is not great actually, but um, hopefully you can see that um, in this green box, we've largely got things that are in green apart from at the top here, which is a, a data variable. And then on the outside, these are blue to, to indicate these are these are net CDF elements, whereas in in um, with, with shading on the background, these are CF net CDF elements of the of the CF data model. Um, so just to talk through briefly what we've got here. So um, and you'll recognize these a lot of these from uh, the, the CF net CDF elements that I referenced in the table. Um, but the central the central item we've got here is is a field construct. So for your data data variable, you have field construct class, um, and that can have a number of things associated with it. Um, uh, let me just count. Yes, yeah, so there's eight eight here. Um, and construct is the, is the term that's that's used. So um, I guess this distinguishes it from variables, which we're talking about in in the NetCDF case, but um, construct is the formal word we'll use, and we'll uh, I'll be using um, henceforward in this in this talk. Um, um, yes, yeah, so you see, there's, there's eight besides the field itself. There are eight um, metadata constructs, um, and if we if you remember back to the diagram of the CDF net CDF elements I showed you, you remember that there were um, these three type of coordinates associated with um, um, with this abstraction of, of the generic con uh, coordinate construct. Um, now, the domain is another concept. So that's, I guess, the key metadata concept um, um, describing the field. So your field is has your data. Um, but it also has metadata, and the domain essentially is the um, central element of the metadata. Um, now, for each of these constructs, they tie closely to um, one or two different NetCDF um, uh, variable elements. So some of these are quite obvious. So um, I guess you know, cell measure construct um, and and a cell measure variable quite closely related um, obviously so this is UML I'm trying not to um, um, talk about it to I guess technical kind of classing subclassing terms more just about the the relations here but obviously this is this is um, uh, these are UML diagrams so you know you can interpret this in, in the proper UML way unfortunately the um, yeah it's hard to get the full diagram in and make the the text for um, you know things such as you know that, that can be um, well you know zero is in this is, this is optional um, for example it's it's quite hard to see those but um, on the reference on the previous page if you want to have a look um, there are lots of these diagrams um, that you can have a closer look at um, yes yeah, so as, as I mentioned on the previous slide so this is independent of the encoding so um so you know the, of the next cdf um or whatever file format it may be adapted to um yes yeah, so in terms of uh, actually using cf compliant net cdf 
I guess moving on to kind of more the, the second half of my talk, which is um, the actual usage and, and best practice with with CF compliant NetCDF. Uh, I mean, there's an abundance of different tools for NetCDF, and I've put some listings up there. Um, there's there's a huge selection actually, and I mentioned at the start that NetCDF has been going for decades. It's been a um, it's been popular for for a long time, and it's um, become uh, one of the key, if not the if not the um, de facto uh, uh, storage for for geoscientific data, at least uh, array based data, um, um, and hence a lot of tools are propped up, and and there are a lot of Python ones as well. Um, I mean, which I think is good because I'm a I'm a big fan of Python, um, but not all of these tools are familiar with CF, so they might be able to process um, CF metadata, but uh, not a lot of them are um, familiar in the sense that they will um, recognize such concepts, um, which uh, I should cover in the um, lab tutorials as, as standard names, for example, which, are, as the name suggests, um, names you can give to, to data arrays that um, are standard in the sense that they are definitive. So um, there the, the wouldn't be two, uh, two the same name for um, something like air temperature. It would just be called be called air temperature. Um, well, that's a bad example because this is really complicated. Um, um, things that you have to describe in in earth science. So um, imagine something more subtle and uh, uh, difficult to describe than that. Um, but yeah, so so only a subset of the various tools will actually um, work with CF in a sense that we say you kind of understand it. Um, um, and on a kind of Python Python note, because like I say, um, the tools that I've been, uh, I mentioned and that I'm gonna cover are Python based. Um, so the official, and I say official, it means that you, the, the UCAR Unidata who are the, the active developers of of NetCDF, so the official face that they have, um, official Python interface for, to um, NetCDF C library, so the main, the main NetCDF library um, is called NetCDF for Python. Um, I didn't realise till till quite recently the four is for NetCDF four, as in um, the NetCDF four kind of data model and version, not you know NetCDF four Python, as in um, F F O R, um, but the kind of, I guess the the dash kind of indicates that maybe I just didn't read it properly. Um, um, and yeah, so just to mention that um, the tool tools we're going to cover next, uh, they do use that as a dependency. So if you're interested in in, in Python um, means to to use NetCF, that's a good one to um, look at, I guess, but. Um, there's also these listings where you can see various tools. But one thing I would like to do in my talk, I guess, is to um, well certainly showcase and hopefully persuade you to um, make use of the tools that we develop at, at NCAS. So um, we have a, a small as a small suite. So we've got four tools here. Um, I think we've had other CF tools that maybe we no longer develop. I'm not quite sure of the history, but um, certainly I know I know of these tools that are actively used um, at the present. Um, they're all open source, so I, I believe they're all yes, they all are hosted on GitHub. I believe they've all been converted to Python three. I know at least um, the first three have, uh, but probably CF Checker as well. Um, and I guess the main thing to say is I'm going to be covering CFDM, CF Python, and CF Plot in quite a lot of detail in further slides and in the uh, the lab tutorial. But CF Checker, um, I don't have particularly 
uh, I don't really have time to cover, unfortunately, but as a, as a summary, um, it provides um, CF compliance checking. So um, if you have an SCDF data set, an SCDF file, um, you can actually, well, you can use the checker um, via installing it and, and setting up yourself and, and using it in that respect. But also there is a, a browser based interface. So you can go on the web, uh, onto this web page, which I believe is is public web page, uh, and you can upload your file, run it through the checker, and it'll tell you um, how CF compliant your your net CDF is. So that might be a good one if you're uh, new to to net CDF and CF, or, or either. Um, that might be a good one to try out just on some data sets that you have, just to see how CF compliant they might be, or they, or, or they might not be. Um, but yes, yeah, so the three I'm going to cover, three libraries I'm going to cover today. Um, so CFDM, so this is a reference implementation of the CF data model, which I've just um, summarized. Um, so it's designed lightweight library. So it's um, it can read and write NetCDF data sets. Um, it can do basic modification of them, um, but it's not designed to do uh, lots of high level um, operations. It's not designed for high level functionality and data analysis. Um, the library we have for that is called CF Python. Um, so this is the second one down. Um, and this uses CFDM, so it extends it and it provides all that high level capability. Um, so, for example, um, you can perform um, uh, an abundance of statistical operations. Um, you can collapse your data, so you can um, make statistical collapses on you know, averages, on maximum, minimum, uh, numerous things, and hope to demonstrate that in the lab tutorial. Um, and other things such as regridding, so changing the the domain. Um, so the domain being this concept I highlighted in the, in the data model. Um, and finally, so finally we have CF plot, which is um, a plotting library that is specifically designed for for earth science. Um, so you can create all the various uh, plots that. Uh, are applicable to, to earth science data really so contour vector uh, vector um, stream line plots um, various different things um, so yes yeah, so I'll I think in a few slides cover those in slight more detail conceptually um, but just to first of all highlight the the central object in these libraries which is the the field struct uh, sometimes we refer to it as a field, field for short. So when I say field, I'm going to mean um, I'll be referring to a field, field construct. Um, so this is basically um, the, your CF net CDF data variable, which I covered um, in the models, uh, but that includes all of its metadata. Um, so I guess that could be broken down into three different things. So your data array, um, your metadata for um, the whole field construct. So say units, um, your standard name. This is a CF conventions. Uh, well, I think I mentioned the standard name. Yeah, it could also be a long name, which is more more a descriptive name that might not. Well, that, that wouldn't be definitive. Um, and then all the metadata constructs that describe um, the domain, which I uh, highlighted before. So this is essentially the eight other constructs um, in the data model. So it was those eight other classes in, in the UML diagram that I showed a few slides back. Um, so say your auxiliary coordinates, uh, your cell methods, your cell measure, uh, and so on. Um, if you want to know more about this, this central object, the field construct, then we have specific pages on uh, well, either the CFDM or the, the CF Python documentation. 
Um, okay, so just highlighting CFDM to begin with. Um, so this is the um, most basic library that uh, I think it's a touched on before. It's not designed to have high level capability. It's designed basically to um, implement the, the CF data model um, with some basic functionality relating to that, but not much more. And actually, it's the the um, a key design element was that it should be subclassable. So um, the the anticipation is that people can build upon it um, for if they want to create a the CF application that they can um, subclass CFTM. Um, and the design of it is, has been um, thought through such that that will be made um, as straightforward as possible. Uh, and even more bare bones, it does include a uh, standalone core implementation, um, which is this package, package, uh, so-called package here, um, that is even more stripped back. So it doesn't even have, as I mentioned, some some related functionality such as reading in and writing files. It's that is just the, the CF data model um, as implemented in Python. Um, so that's that's a summary of CF. Um, uh, the main way is to um, uh, describe these libraries, I guess, is to show them in use in practice. So um, this is a you know summary, but um, I'd encourage you to join in with these lab tutorials and the little walkthrough I'm going to do um, to actually get a feel um, properly of what, of what the libraries do, other than just this background here. Um, but yeah, so CF Python. Um, so as I mentioned, it builds upon CFDM. So that you know the, the code base it imports CFDM and it adds various things on. Um, so it's designed to be basically data, data analysis, uh, as well as um, uh, CF metadata aware um, functionality that, that CFDM has. Um, now this is just a small a small sample, and actually on on the documentation there is a a more comprehensive listing. Um, but as well as this this first one that, that CFDM can do read in, inspect, and write field, field constructs. Um, it can also um, do various data analysis tasks, um, statistical collapses, subspaces, regridding. Um, Various um, trying to work out how to pronounce arith arithmetic. That's probably what I'm trying to say. Um, working with um, groups that are in NetCDF4, uh, manipulating those. Um, so this is just a small sample, and hopefully I'll be able to show some of these in practice in in the lab tutorial on the walkthrough. Um, and finally, the CF plot. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is a, a plotting library. Um, this is an example created with CF plot. So there's a there's contours here uh, with the, with the contour lines hidden, but you can see the there's a color map indicating the um, uh, well the, the data essentially, and and also some some vector plots overlaid. Um, yeah, that's about as much as I can say about CF plot. The, the main thing is to to try it really and play around with all the the plotting you can do um, with CF plot. Um, okay, so to to summarise, um, so NetCDF um, provides flexible self-describing storage um, for the Earth sciences, although we're not not um, exclusively, but it's you know become very common in the uh, geoscientific domain, um, but CF NetCDF. So that is to say, NetCDF when used um, with the. Oh, sorry, I've seen a lot of question. Actually, I'll. Uh, yes. So, oh, hang on, I'm trying to. Uh, let me get the chat up. 
Uh, yeah, so I think I, I'm trying to look for the question. If that was a question about projections, yes, it can do various different projections. Um, I've tried to display some of these during the lab tutorial just via customization um, on, on the various plots shown. But yes, we should be able to see various different ones. So that was a cylindrical, the cylindrical projection, I believe. Um, but there's various others that can be done. Um, um, yeah, so I, I hope that answers your question. Sorry, I can't I'm trying to look for Oh, here it is. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, yeah, sorry, but I guess back to the, the summary. Um, yeah, so so net, CF, net CDF, which is to say net CDF, um, where the metadata is standardized under the CF conventions, become a community standard i was i was tempted to put the community standard but i think because there's lots of different um domains within geoscience it's some communities do some smaller sub communities do have their own um different standards perhaps so maybe i can't say the community standard but it is becoming um widely recognized certainly and a community standards, I think it's safe to say, definitely. Um, so different data models of it are possible, but um, in 2017, um, an official one was proposed in, in a paper and has since been accepted into the official conventions. Um, so it can't be considered the official model. And that's guaranteed to be up to date for all CF conventions versions. Um, so working with NetCDF and in particular, um, CF net CDF there's numerous tools um, um, a, a, a subset of which do um, recognize CF uh, metadata and can work with it in a um, in an intuitive way um, but I guess a point I'd like to highlight about NCAS's data tools are that um, they have I put CF compliance at heart really so they're, they're built around um, CFDM, which itself is, is a reference implementation of the CF data model, um, the official one. So CF is really at the core. It's not just something that's been bolted on um, you know, at the end because it seems, you know, because it's coming popular. It's something that is really fundamental to to the to the libraries. Um, and as I'm going to hopefully be able to demonstrate in the the lab tutorial and and the walkthrough. Um, it's numerous different capabilities that these libraries um, can provide. So you can read in um, and write to NetCDF and do lots of um, various analysis and modifications, various levels of inspection um, on the data and the metadata that, that you have, um, and plotting the CF plot and compliance checking also with the CF checker. Um, yeah, excellent. So that is, I guess, my, my slides, which, as I mentioned at the start, are to highlight the concept. But uh, yes, it would definitely be good to, um, yeah, provide a, a bit of a walkthrough that will hopefully complement the, the lab tutorial in getting you started actually working with these tools. Because um, I can, you know, I can talk about why why they're useful, but really, if you practice, hopefully you can, um, yeah, see that they um, can make your life your life a, a lot easier. Um, um, yeah, excellent. So, does, is there any more questions? I'm sorry, I might miss some as we as we're going through. Um, that's one for Luciana. Yeah, so I, I think I've answered on on map projections. Uh, but yeah, you'll definitely see if you go through the lab tutorial, um, some examples of different projections there.